Hello and welcome to our channel. Today, we will be presenting Blood of the Northmen, a tile placement and area majority game designed by Karl Hudik and illustrated by Radosław Jastsuk. It was first published in 2021 by Zaha Games. Players have to assemble their warbands at fledgling towns to form a nation under their rule by placing new tiles with forests, lakes, mountains and roads. Depending on the sides of the tile placed, they will recruit, maneuver or attack with their forces. It is a 1 to 4 player game, suitable for people over 14 and with a length between 30 and 60 minutes. Let's see what Blood of the Northman is about. <laughs> Apart from the rulebooks in English, German, and Polish, the game has one active player marker, five player aid tiles, eight special ability tiles, 40 town tiles, 10 of each type, and 80 unique terrain tiles. There are also five double-sided player boards with different jarls. The area with circles on the left will be their settlement, and the one on the right will be used to score victory points. As for miniatures, there are 60 warbands, 12 for each player, and 12 strongholds. These bags are used to store the miniatures of the different Jarls. Let's start with the game preparation. Shuffle all the map tiles to form draw stacks. Place the piles next to the playing area within all players' reach. The draw stacks will have a different number of tiles depending on the number of players. 60 random tiles for two player games. 90 in games with three players and if there are four players 120 group the stronghold miniatures to create a supply next to the draw stack then players have to choose a board which will be placed in front of them they will also take the set of 12 miniatures matching their y'all and place them on their settlement next each player will randomly draw one special ability tile and add it to their board Finally, they will complete their board with a player aid tile. Deal one tile from the stack to each player face up. The player who has the tile with the most mountain sides will be the starting player. This player will take the active player marker and place it next to their player board. If there is a tie, deal another tile to the tied players until they are not drawn. Continue dealing tiles face down from the stack until the starting player has three, the player to their left four the next one five, and so on. Let's move on to the gameplay. Beginning with the starting player and proceeding clockwise around the playing area, players perform these actions during their turn, following this order. The first action is adding a tile to the map. The starting player chooses any tile from their hand and places it face up in the middle of the play area to start the map. The next two players to have a turn must place a tile from their hand so that it is adjacent to just one side of one of the previously placed tiles. Once there are three tiles in the map, and for the rest of the game, players must place tiles from their hand, so that they are adjacent to at least two previously placed tiles. Forest, lake, road, and empty sides must be placed adjacent to tiles that match their type. Mountain sides are the exception, they may be placed next to any kind of side, except roads. If on their turn, players don't have a tile in their hand that they can legally place, or if they simply choose not to place one from their hand, they draw a tile from the deck and reveal it face up. Then, they can add it to the map. If they can't or wish not to, they will discard it to a discard pile next to the draw pile. Then, they will draw another tile into their hand and end their turn immediately without performing any further actions. When adding a tile to the map, the active player must check all its sides and perform forest, lake, road and mountain actions in this order. Players will count first the number of forest sides on the tile and perform up to that number of forest actions. They may choose to perform all, some or none of these actions, but all of them must be of the same type. There are two types of forest actions, forming a warband and drawing new tiles. To form a warband, players take a warband miniature from the settlement and place it on the tile they've just added. If there are no more warbands available in their settlement, they may instead take one from any other tile on the map 
or from their victory points. Instead of forming a warband, players can draw as many tiles as forest sides on the tile. In this case, only one. The tiles drawn can never exceed the number of warband miniatures remaining in their settlement. For lake actions, players will also count the number of lake sides and perform up to that number of actions. By placing this tile, the player gets two lake actions. On the one hand, they can take up to three of their warbands from a single tile on the map and move them to an adjacent tile, across an empty side, or a road. Armies cannot move across mountains. They may move across a forest side, but that requires using two consecutive lake actions. In this case, they won't be able to do it, since they only have one lake action left. An army may move across any number of lake sides as one action. In this example, they could move to the following tiles. But the player decides to move along the road as their last lake action. Instead of moving their warbands, players can draw as many tiles as lake actions available. Since this player got two lake actions, two tiles could be drawn. However, they have used the lake actions to move their warbands. Therefore, drawing new tiles will not be allowed. In addition, players can only choose to draw tiles with lake actions if they didn't draw tiles with forest actions. For road actions, players will count road sides to know how many actions they can perform. Roads allow players to take any number of their own warbands from the same tile having a road and move them to an adjacent tile along the road. If the destination tile does not have any enemy warbands, they may continue moving to successive tiles until they decide to stop or reach a tile with one or more enemy miniatures. Once a group of warbands begins moving, they must all move together and end their movement on the same tile. That is, a player cannot choose to continue moving only some of them. Similarly, warbands encountered along the way can't join the ones that are moving. Players may move an army off the edge of the map, across road sides. When doing this, they have to trace a route either clockwise or counterclockwise along the edge of the map until they reach another roadside on a tile. Then, they move their army onto the first of such tiles and end their road action. Instead of moving their armies, players can draw new tiles. As usual, this action cannot be performed if it has been done as a forest or lake action. In this case, the player has two actions. They could use the first road action to move their two miniatures all the way until they reach the city with Halver's warbands, and the second one to get to the next city. However, they decide to use their first action to stop on the tile where there is another of their warband miniatures, so that they are able to start their second action there, using the three of them. This way, they are allowed to group their forces. They could have also used their actions to move this miniature two times, or use an action for each group. To perform mountain actions, players have to count again the sides of the tile they have just placed. These actions allow players to choose a tile on the map containing one or more of their warbands, and at least an enemy warband, to fight a battle. First, the active player reveals a tile for each of their warbands on the tile, plus an additional one for starting the battle. Then, going clockwise, each player fighting the battle reveals a number of tiles equal to their number of warbands on the tile. Tiles may be revealed from their hand or drawn from the draw deck, and they must be revealed one at a time, since players may decide after revealing the previous tile from where to pick the following one. Then, each player counts the total number of mountain sides on all their revealed tiles. This sum will be their battle strength. In this example, Yal Ingrid has a battle strength of 6, while Yal Halvar has only managed to get 4. The player with the highest battle strength wins the battle. Each player not having the highest battle strength loses a number of miniatures equal to the difference between their battle strength and the highest strength in the battle. In this case, Halvar will lose 2 warbands. If there are multiple players with the highest battle strength, each of them will lose a warband too. After the battle is over, all the tiles that were revealed are discarded. Players remove their lost warbands from the tile on which the battle took place and place them back in their settlement. If they don't have enough warbands to lose, they simply lose all their warbands on the tile. If there is a single player with the highest battle strength, the player may add a warband to the tile. 
If that player is also the only one with warbands remaining on the tile, it will be two instead. Finally, the player or players with the highest battle strength score one victory point each. Victory points are marked by taking a warband miniature from their settlement and placing it at the campfire on their player board. If there are no warbands available in the settlement, they may remove one of their warbands from a tile on the map. Players performing more than one mountain action to fight battles may fight the following battles on different tiles, or on the same one, if there are still enemy warbands there. Players don't decide the location of the next battle until the first one is over. Instead of fighting, players can draw tiles, but remember that this action cannot be performed if it has been done as a forest, lake or road action. There are several ways of ending the game. It can be won with victory points. If a player collects 6 victory points, wins the game. If multiple players collect a 6th victory point during the same battle, the victory is shared. The game can also be won by founding Bjarmia. If at the end of their turn, a player has a warband in at least one town of each type, and they are able to trace a path that crosses those towns without going over a mountain, off the map, or through a tile that only has enemy miniatures, they would have founded the nation of Bjarmia and won the game. The last way to end the game will be when there are no tiles left to draw. The player taking their turn finishes their actions. At the end of the turn, the player with at least one warband in most towns wins. If there is a tie, the player with the most victory points wins. If still drawn, the player with the most warbands on the map is the winner. If the tie persists, the game is drawn between them. There are two advanced modules for players who are familiar with the game. Commodities and Strongholds. Each can be added separately to the game, or they can be combined for even a richer experience. With the Commodities module, when players add a tile with a town to the map, and before resolving any of the basic actions, they can gain a number of additional actions. For each town of any type on the map, in which only their warbands are present, they gain one additional action. For each town of the same type as the newly placed one, in which only their miniatures are present, they gain another additional action. Players performing a meet action, place one of their warband miniatures from their settlement into a reserve in front of them. If none are available in the settlement, they may remove one from a tile on the map, or from their scored victory points. The warband miniatures in a player's reserve, may be spent later on the current turn, or in any of the following turns, together or separately as extra forest, lake, road, or mountain actions. They may be spent this way, even if the player is not entitled to any actions of that type from the tile placed. Warbands used for this purpose are removed from the reserve and are placed back in the settlement. Players performing pelt actions return all their victory points and then score one victory point for each pelt action. For example, if a player has three pelt actions and two victory points, they can return those victory points to their settlement. Then, they will mark each of the new victory points by taking a miniature from their settlement. Or, if none are available there, by removing one from a tile on the map, or taking one from their reserve. Players can never add points to their score with a pelt action, beyond the number of warband miniatures they have on the map. Players performing silver actions must discard one tile from their hand, and then choose a tile on the map where they have a warband miniature and there is also at least a warband from another player. From that tile, they remove one miniature of any other player, which is then returned to their owner's settlement. Removed warbands are bribed without battle. Therefore, no victory points are scored for their removal. Players performing tusk actions may place a tile from their hand face down in front of them. This tile is kept together with any other previously prepared tiles. Prepared tiles may be used in battles on future turns, whether it is a battle started by the player or by another one. Right before players draw tiles to determine battle strength, they may choose to reveal some or all of the prepared tiles in front of them, adding the number of mountain sides on the tiles to their battle strength. Prepared tiles are used in addition to the battle tiles the player normally receives. Unused prepared tiles are kept face down for future battles but the ones that were used are discarded after the battle. As for strongholds, whenever players add a tile to the map, and before resolving town or basic actions,
they may place a stronghold on one of the sides of the tile, adjacent to another side of the map. When adding a stronghold to a tile, one of the sides may not follow the tile placement restrictions. However, the player must build the stronghold on that side. Players also take a warband from their settlement and place it in the stronghold to indicate ownership. If there are no more warbands available in their settlement, they may instead take one from any other place on the map, their victory points, reserve, or from their previously placed strongholds. If they choose this last option, they have to return the empty stronghold to the supply. Strongholds over an illegally matched side are permanent. Therefore, they can't be removed. If there are no more strongholds in the supply, they may return one of their previously placed strongholds to place the new one. Players can't perform the normal basic action from the side over which they placed a stronghold. Sides on the map with a player's own stronghold are considered empty sides, passable when moving miniatures with lake or road actions. On the other hand, sides on the map with an opponent's stronghold are treated as a mountain, becoming an impassable side. The fact that every action is based on the tile placed is really interesting. This also affects the way you play. For example, you might decide to keep tiles with mountains to fight battles in future turns, but then be forced to use them to prevent one of your opponents from winning the game by connecting four cities. Each game is different and your strategies will change depending on the tiles of the map and the ones from your hand. There is right now an expansion for this game on Kickstarter. It is called Test of Faith, and it includes new tiles with mountain passes for roads, cursors, longships, catapults, and churches where you can take refuge from all of these new threats. All warband miniatures are gray, and some of them are quite similar. Therefore, it can be hard to tell them apart when several of them are on the same tile. This issue is fixed with the new expansion, as it comes with a set of plastic stands in five colors for all the warbands from the base game. What do you think about Blood of the Northmen? We hope to read your comments and remember, if you have enjoyed watching this video, don't forget to like it. To be up to date with our latest videos, subscribe to the channel and click the bell. We will continue playing in our next video.